Now, don't get cremated, get acclimated instead. Yes, have you ever heard of it? No. Acclimate? I, I didn't hear the last week. Never heard of it. A friend of mine told me about it, yeah. So what it is, is it's an alternative to cremation. Now, cremation, it turns out, is bad for the environment. Aquamation is a chemical process that renders all your flesh down into liquid form, leaves behind your bones. The bones get crushed and given to your loved one as, as if it's like ashes, I guess, in a sense. Yeah. But it's much better for the environment. And it's predicted to take over from cremation is the idea. And they're using yeah. clever science as well to do this. Now, so. now the, the cremation process involves the burning of uh, the, the body. So um, what's, you know non-environmentally yeah. friendly about the cremation process. It's called alkaline hydrolysis. Now, as a chemist, Pat, you'll know what alkaline hydrolysis yeah. is from your chemical engineering days. Basically, you put you put the remains in a big vat, right, in water. Yeah. You he- heat it up to 93 degrees centigrade just to get it nice and warm, put in this alkaline solution. Now, alkali can be quite caustic, as we all know. You can use alkali to clean things, can't you? And that begins gently to dissolve everything into liquid form. And the bones, anything organic, as we say, gets dissolved and the stuff left behind then is your bones which are inorganic and that's what's left at the it takes 16 hours by the way but I've, I've read as well so a 16 hour process and they're recommending it because it's a gentle thing to do instead of cremation yeah, obviously but cremation is it to the, do with the gas that you need to, to use yeah, yeah, um, yeah that's, that's, that's the fuel fat to burn to burn remains it generates 245 kilograms of carbon dioxide a cremation right a huge okay. amount of, well not a huge amount of, a significant amount of carbon dioxide comes off whereas aquamation is 28 kilograms Come, of carbon is emitted because you have to use a bit of heat. Obviously. So this is a very sustainable way. It's, it's a very sustainable way to do things. Yeah, so it just shows. You. Now the liquid that is then created by the alkaline yeah. uh, absorption of human flesh and organs and all the rest. What did they do with that it liquid? Got, that's the, that's there's a couple of un- unseemly into the wastewater. You see, it just gets flushed away down the, down, down the, the loo. loo. But all it is is amino acids and lipids and some of your component parts that have dissolved into the liquid. You see, and of course any fears about that if you if you do embalming. You know, people are embalmed. Some of the blood products are put into the wastewater anyway. So it's not as if it's unusual to, yeah. to use some of these byproducts, should we call it, to stick into the, into the wastewater system. So there's nothing gone toward there necessarily. And I guess, now what they do with the liquid, they bring it to a wastewater plant, by the way. It's also very sterilizing. So any, any kind of risk of infection. What, the, the alkaline the will alkali. really destroy well, everything. Well, but it's all about pH, as you know. And, and mm-hmm. you, you could use acid down one end of the pH scale as acidic things. And just to tell Cormac, I was always asking me about lime scale. Acid's a great way to dissolve lime scale. Then on the other end, alkali, but that, that can, again, the two ends yeah. of, the, of the pH spectrum I are mean, corrosive. I people will music. know uh, how burning, say, caustic soda can be. Yeah, exactly. If, if you drop a bit of acid on your skin, it'll burn you. So would alkali, a caustic soda precisely. So we, this, the guy who invented it, Joe Wilson, actually, he'd worked on, um, one of his jobs was disposing farm animals through cremation and he realised I could use alkaline hydrolysis as a better way to do it and he, and he begins doing this on farm animals first then he has an idea his phrase Pat is I'll revolutionise the death industry he says by introducing this alkaline hydrolysis for humans now as well so, is this commercial? Very much so, yes, exactly. Well, there's a, there's a cost, though. I don't know what the costs are, but I suspect it's, it, it could be cheaper than cremation. I'm not sure about that. But certainly, the big, the big um, selling point is environmental, really. And, and, mm. and a great phrase I've seen as well, but you can save the planet after you're dead. Because, <laughs> because you aren't generating carbon dioxide, you see, through the cremation process. Yeah. So, obviously, all disease is uh, destroyed by yeah. this alkaline uh, hydrolysis thing. Exactly. Yes, so, all the bacteria so they, or viruses get destroyed as well, you see. So, the liquid that comes off is safe, basically. You know, and it is full of bits of amino acids and lipids yeah. from your, your tissues, but still it's a safe liquid. And won't do any harm when it, all of this goes into the sewers. No, that's exactly right. Yeah. And yeah. they've shown that, of course, they had to test for safety, didn't they? So. And then the bones are ground up and you get something to put in the urn. Yes, the bones then are taken out. By, by the way, Pat, if you have a, you have a metal hip <laughs> or, a, or a breast implant, that doesn't dissolve because that's inorganic, you see. They get taken out. As what happened with cremation as well, I presume, with the metal. Uh, but in this case, the bones are left behind. They're crushed into a fine powder and then given over to the relatives. And you can scatter the bones as you would as if it was ashes, the idea. So have the mafia heard about this? Uh? <laughs> That's the next question. <laughs> I know it's an easy way to dispose, but yeah. isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and there are concerns, though. I mean, what about... Um, uh, Maybe societies where cremation is traditional, like yeah. in, in Hindu society. Uh, what about in Christian yeah. uh, religion? I mean, are there reservations about all of well, this? Well, the Catholic Church, Pat, as you may remember, was against cremation. Did you know that for a long time? No. And I presume that was to do with the resurrection of the body was one idea, I guess. You know, and then they spoke out against cremation. They don't anymore, of course. You know, But some religions wouldn't like this. They would see it as an unnatural process that seems a bit inhuman in a strange way. Now, the alternative, of course, is a regular burial. 
Now, that can be environmentally damaging. How? The embalming fluids that they use, the formaldehyde, there's mercury in these embalming fluids, they leach into the environment. Now, again, it's, it's less, less toxic to the environment as cremation would be, but even still regular embalming burials generate environmental pollutants as well. So that's, so that's a case that against So in, in Forest Lawn Cemetery where a lot of people would be embalmed yep. uh, before being buried? I mean, not everyone's embalmed uh, before burial. But, no. Uh, but that the land would be kind of... The t- land is a bit contaminated. And the second big reason for this but is it's to save space. The, 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 the graveyard are filling up. This is a case that the companies make as well. In other words, there's less space to bury people, so why not use this as an approach? And if it's if it's safe to the environment, then it's the one to go for. Is what they're arguing, you know. Now, uh, the the Catholic Church, as you say, has reservations yeah. about this. They did have about cremation. They don't uh, now, but they still have reservations about this. But there was a, a Christian gentleman oh, who was a pioneer. Thing. But Desmond Tutu, remember him? Pat? The he, Anglican bishop in South Africa. In 2021, he was acclimated. That's the phrase they use for this. By the way. And he, I believe he's on record as saying he wanted, he didn't want to damage the environment again. You know, that kind of idea. And he asked to undergo acclimation. And a company in America, of course, is making loads of these machines. You can any, Anybody can purchase one of these. And in Ireland now, by the way, in Navin, there's going to be a place that can do acclimation as well. So this, this company in America, that this guy Joe Wilson founded, that, he's predicting, you know, huge business around acclimation as, as, as it gets more and more popular. But Desmond mm-hmm. Tutu, I mean, he's, he was a hero to many. The fact that he decided to go for this as a, yeah. as a way of his remains yeah. being uh, treated that, was a big plus for the whole acclimation business. There, there are people who believe maybe that human bodies should be composted. Yeah, well, there's, there's alternatives. There's eco-burial, remember, and that, I think that's a system where it's regular burial without any formaldehyde or embalming fluids, for instance. There's also com- yeah, composting, which sounds a bit... Macabre as well, doesn't yeah. it? You know, so there are other alternatives out there that are that are environmentally friendly, not just acclimation. So I guess if the thing is, Pat, you got to decide what you want. Will you put it? Will you put it in your will? I, I wish to be acclimated or eco buried or whatever it might be. You know, um, some of the questions coming in on from WhatsApp. I have a pacemaker, but I want to be cremated. Will it melt? If not, where will it go? I don't think it melts. The temperature wouldn't get on. And again, these things that are left over. Well, cremation, it would be burnt up, I presume. Well, unless it's met, the metal is the question. I don't know is the answer, but I think often with cremation, some things don't get burnt, basically. They're taken out, though, obviously, and the ashes are given to the loved ones. So they remove any things that are left mm. behind like that. Soylent green becomes a reality. Coming to a supermarket shelf near you soon. That's from yeah. Anthony. Um, there we go, Pat. The final step into oblivion will be a gentle simmering and our crush bones can be used to fertilise those Roses. Well, this is it. So, a great for us. You churn in warm water until all that remains is a fine powder. It sounds great. That's, a, that's by the way, that's a, that's an advertisement for this. You see, so it's a bit like that. Another one. Uh, someone obviously who favours cremation. Why are we not using biogas? For cremation, almost no carbon footprint. That's well, exactly, from... and I guess the, crem- the crematoriums, I bet you, would be aware of their carbon footprint. Watch, you know, and they may have other, and they're going to be in competition now with the with the aquamation centres, aren't they? So there's probably a better way to do cremation that's environmentally friendly, potentially. I tell you what, you educate me every time you enter the studio. Thank you. It, 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 like that. Would you like to be? What do you? What do you think yourself? Would you like to be aquamated or cremated? You might want to discuss this on air. I, I'm wondering, would cremation be quicker? If I'm quicker. You know, you still have a feeling you might feel something. You, know, <laughs> you never know. You never know. We'll <laughs> never know. That's the truth of it. Luke O'Neill, professor of biochemistry at Trinity College in Dublin. Uh, thank you very much.